In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can export out our pieces from both Maya and ZBrush to do some baking inside of Substance Painter. So you can see we're inside of Substance Painter right now. And one of the things I want to show you is a setup to where you can bake things where it's doing um, a matching by name. So in that case, you can do things like what we're taking a look at here is ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion just takes a look at the um, distance from one polygon to the other and kind of does some kind of uh, shading across that basically to uh, simulate some of the darkness that might happen in the real world where basically light gets trapped in corners and things like that. It makes it have a bit of a more realistic kind of look. But if you know that we have a top and a bottom to our crate, um, we want to make sure that we don't produce any ambient occlusion uh, from the top of the crate to the bottom of the crate because if we wanted to take the top of this thing off, we wouldn't want to see this ambient occlusion on there. So there's some things that we're going to be able to do to set that up and we'll take a look at that. Um, I'm going to put this in a regular mode here like this so you can kind of see what the ambient inclusion looks like whenever you first bake the maps. And if we um, turn this off, the actually the opacity of this, so you can see that we've got a top and a, a bottom to this. You can see what's just turning off and on the top of that crate there is no darkness that's being uh, generated along the bottom of here. Now, if we didn't do this match by name, we would have a lot of black kind of shading on here. And if we took the top off of this, it would look very, very odd. So that's something that we're going to look at for matching the names for this. And then from there, you can see I'm using a mask and I'm using a color selection to uh, hide the top of this with opacity. And so the other thing we're going to look at is making some colors inside a ZBrush on our high-res models so we can bake that out to what is called an ID mask. And it makes it really simple for you to just pick colors from this particular thing, um, just kind of like this. And you can see how if I pick that color, it's making it more transparent like that. And you can just go ahead and uh, subtract colors or add them. So if I just go and start fresh, then I can pick a color here and I can pick a color here and you can see I've hidden the top of that thing. So that's pretty cool um, what we can do with that. Um, let's take a look. Let's hop on over to ZBrush real quick and you can see what I've got for this for the uh, for the colors that are going on for here. Okay, so basically what I've got is inside of here inside of ZBrush is we've got our high res mesh that we had before and I turned on the poly paint information so if you turn these things on you can see color information for this so it's pretty simple the colors don't really matter you can pick whatever colors that you want uh, they can be uh, just you know pure red uh, pure green blue any kind of colors that are like kind of closer to being a pure kind of color the computer's going to have an easier time picking that up. So it would be best if you just use some of these kind of like really extreme kind of colors. You're only doing this to make a color selection inside a substance uh, painter. So in order to fill with a color, normally whenever you have, uh, you're starting off and you push this over, the thing becomes whatever that color is. But if you have the poly paint data on, um, until you fill it with a color, it's not going to stay a color. Uh, once you push it on a color, you can go to color and you can say fill object and you can see we fill that with uh, red and if we push this around, we can do go to something like green, say color, fill object. Um, we could go and push this around to these different kind of blues, color, fill object. So once you do that, um, it's pretty simple for you to get some colors on there. If we took a look at this, I'm just going to solo this top part for a second, and I'll tap P to turn off perspective. Basically what I did is if I, if I fill uh, the color with this, if I go to color, fill objects, like, just like we did, and then maybe if I hold on control and shift and I drag a marquee around an area, it will show me just that particular area. And if I hold on control and shift again, and maybe I just drag right and through here, I'm kind of limiting it for what I see and if I hold on control and shift and drag right here I'm kind of just trying to get that visible now if you want to hide something you can hold on control and shift and then you while you're dragging out you hold down alt and you can subtract from it so you can see what I did here I just kind of isolated that part and now I can go make a different color and say color fill object and to bring everything back visibility wise just hold on control and shift and then click in the open viewport and so now you can see how I basically uh, filled those with those colors that you see that we've got here for this. I'll tap P to turn perspective back on and we'll select the crate here. 
So that's going to give us everything that we need for our color information. If you remember from before, we um, we took this information and we actually poly reduced it. So if we take the plugin, click and drag it over into this area, just like this, and we go to Decimation Master. If you want to hold poly paint information um, while you decimate, before you decimate, you click Use and Keep Poly Paint Data, just like that. And then you say pre-process current, just like you normally would. And then you do your percentage of decimation or your K polys, like what we looked at before, and just say decimate current. Now when you export this out, you're going to want to export this out as an FBX. So again, with the Z plugin uh, area open, we're going to open this up and go to the FBX export import area. And if you export this out as an FBX, it's going to retain um, this information that you have as far as the color information goes. So you export this thing out and you'll export the bottom and the top for the crate for that. Let me show you in substance what we would do for baking. So we're not going to get too far in this because we'll have to talk about baking maps um, in just a little bit. But if we go to this texture setting area, I just want you to be aware of if you go to bake mesh maps, if you go to the ID area and you tell it to use color source, vertex color, that's basically what polypane is. We're just using vertex colors. We're taking the polygons and we're filling them with color. And you can say this color generator, you would just use a uh, hue shift. Okay, so that's what's basically going on behind the scenes for this color information. Now let's take a look at uh, Maya. And let's talk about this matching by name and matching of parts for baking things. So before what people had to do was take their parts and they had to move it away from each other, kind of like this for the top and the bottom, and they had to move the high-res model uh, in the same location so it could bake that information, but it wouldn't be close enough to where it would uh, bleed into this object or this object would be affecting this object. So what they did was give the ability to uh, use a naming convention for this uh, and make it a lot uh nicer to kind of just use a naming convention to do this non-moving of parts. So it acts as if you've moved the parts away from each other and it gives you that functionality, but you don't have to physically move the parts away from each other. Now in order to do this, you would need to make sure you have a low res mesh and you can see that we're giving it an underscore low and you can have whatever you want in front of it. So it's going to look for that underscore low. So we've got a cr crate top low and we've got a crate bottom underscore low. Now what I need to do is make sure that I have high res matching pieces, uh, but instead of an underscore low, we need to make sure we have an underscore high. So let's hop on over to ZBrush and we'll take a look at that. So you see that we've got a crate top underscore high, and we've got a crate bottom underscore high. Now the um, case sensitivity of things actually matters, so make sure you've got the same exact name, underscore high, underscore low. And um, you can export each one of these pieces out as an FBX. And if you export that out like this, it's going to take the name from whatever you, the, uh, the subtool is that you have. So you can either do it that way. If you have high-res pieces, I recommend exporting out high-res pieces one at, a, one at a time. You could um, export everything that is visible or, say, visible uh, all, and it would export all the subtools that you see here. Or if you only had a few visible, you could do just visible. Um, you could do that and it would export out one FBX and it would retain the naming. The only thing is your poly count really jumps up. So uh, it's probably a smarter idea to um, export out your high res stuff as separate pieces like that. Okay. So you would export out each one and you would have uh, an export and an FBX of crate top high and a crate bottom high. And then from Maya, the other thing that you could do is you want to make sure that everything's got uh, one material assigned to it. Uh, so if you're just using the default Lambert material, there's not really too much you got to be worried about. If we go to Windows and we go to uh, Rendering Editors and we go to Hypershade and we load this thing up, we can see here's the different uh, materials that we have in here. And if we select our object, hit Control A for this and bring up the Attribute Editor, and if I actually clicked and drag that out, I kind of like to look at it that way. You can see we've got a Lambert assigned to this and a Lambert assigned to this as well. So uh, we want to assign the same material to these things to make sure they bake down into one texture set. Because you can see if we go to our UV editor window and we take a look at this, we put everything in the 0 to 1 space. 
So if we assign a material to this and assign another material to this bottom piece, we would make what is called inside of Substance Painter texture sets. So it basically kind of break this model apart into a top and a bottom, just like what we have. But I would like for us, when we're done, to spit out one map and make it feel like there's just one object and all the textures belong together in the zero to one space. In order to do that, you just need to make sure you have one material assigned to everything. So if you are um, just using the default Lambert, it's not a big deal. Now what you could do, if you are gonna make another material, you can always be in object mode. So we can right click on here and say object mode. And then we can right click and say assign new material. And if you do that, you're able to choose the type of material that you want. You could choose something like a blend material. You could give it a name, uh, call this crate, something like that. And you could take this other object and then just right click and say, instead of assign new material, you say assign existing material and you can say crate. So now we both have these uh, assigned to crate. Now, if we wanted to assign these to the Lambert, we could just right click on it and say assign existing material and say Lambert do this one here as well right click assign our Lambert material and that's how you can ensure you've got one material for uh, both of these objects just like that now you could export um, these out just by grabbing them together and then exporting them as an FBX and say file export selection uh, right here and we could choose FBX as our export type and then we would be able to export uh, that out if we edit the presets, you want to tell it to use the smoothing groups and um, the advice was that you're supposed to triangulate the model and also for um, uh, for Substance Painter, they were suggesting that you don't have this tangents and binormals. You have that turned off and you actually have that uh, turned off whenever you export to go into UE4 and tell UE4 to calculate your tangents and binormals. I usually have that option on, so I'm actually going against the grain for uh, what the what is suggested there. But I do see there is sometimes a discrepancy between some of the the look of what the tangents look like inside a Substance Painter versus um, UE4, and that could be the uh, reason why. Okay, so with those two objects selected, you could export it that way, or you could put it in a group like what we talked about, and you could export the group out and say File Export Selection and do the FBX export. And again, with the presets, you could change the presets just like what we talked about and so whenever you get done you're gonna have um, two objects that we've got going on here let me start a brand new project inside of substance painter and um, let's just go ahead and do this it's going to ask you for a template we're gonna use PBR metal roughness and we'll do alpha test that just means alpha is either gonna be pure on or pure off and UE4 has another method that is uh, got full gradation. They have full gradation in here of uh, alpha, and we could use that, but we're not going to. Uh, UE4 has a little bit of trouble drawing with some of that, uh, so we're just going to keep it on this um, this method. I'm going to put mine on a document resolution of 4096, and then it's going to ask you to select your uh, FBX, the base model that you're going to be using to uh, to create everything with. So I exported that thing out, and if you remember, the thing that we exported out from Maya was a crate low.fbx. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit, hit open, and I'm going to hit okay for this. And I'm going to not save any of the changes to that project that you see here. And now I'm gonna zoom out. And here we can see if we tap F1 or F2, it's just gonna be this 3D view. And if we tap F1, we get both um, a 2D view and a 3D view, and I'm just using the middle mouse button and then holding down Alt and middle mouse. Uh, controls are just like Maya, Alt, left mouse, Alt, middle mouse, and Alt, right mouse will do uh, rotation, panning, and zooming for this. Now, if you hold down Shift and right click, you can move the lighting around uh, your object. And so that's kind of neat for uh, what we're doing. So. This is basically everything you need to know about exporting your models outside of Maya and ZBrush and being able to import them into Substance Painter. Now in the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can start baking our maps.